Hello students, now we are approaching towards the end of our course. But there is one very important sensor, which is humidity and temperature sensor. How, how would it be if uh, I tell you that you can make your own weather station at home? Exciting, right? So let's get into that. DTH11 sensor is the same component which will help you do this. So this is the sensor that is combination of humidity and temperature sensor. So it's a low cost, very uh, simple to use, a, a simple uh, sensor that's available in your kit. It's that blue color uh, component like this. So it has three pins. It has one for negative, another for positive, which is uh, five volts or three volts. And a center pin is for uh, reading the uh, humidity and the temperature. So basically, it gives you the relative humidity, which is nothing else but the humidity in the percentage. It's a basic level sensor, so it can read from 20 to 80 percent of humidity with 5 percent accuracy and temperature ranging between 0 to 50 degrees centigrade with 2 uh, degrees centigrade of accuracy. It can read uh, once every second. So it's a kind of a slow sensor, I would say. And hence, uh, it, it, if it takes one reading at a time, then you would need to wait one second for humidity and one second for temperature. So total in total, you should take reading every two seconds, not before that. It was raining here at my place. So I'm expecting that it would be showing a high uh, humidity. And also it is pretty cold here. So let's see actually what's the weather and the humidity at my place. To do that, we'll have to build this circuit, which is very simple. In my opinion, it's just just power and one wire for uh, reading the sensor values. So here you see the rightmost uh, is the ground pin. Uh, then the leftmost is for power, which is represented as red. And the blue one is the uh, wire for reading the sensor values. And I've connected it to pin number two. For the sake of simplicity, I've just skipped the breadboard and connected, connected the sensor directly. Here you can see the positive goes to 5 volts and negative goes to ground and the out pin is connected to pin number 2 using uh, blue wire. Let's look at the programming side of it. And now I would rather request you to uh, pause this video and try this program on your own. And there are a few hints. So this sensor has a library by Adafruit. You can install that library. It's named as DHT sensor library by Adafruit. After that, you can open the example sketch uh, in the example section. And it is nothing else but the same program on my screen. And then try it. So maybe you can pause the video now and uh, try it on your own. <clears throat> done okay uh, even if you were not able to no worries i'll explain each and everything here so we will go ahead and use the library rather than uh, creating everything from the scratch this library is very useful and just like every other sensor has its library uh, we'll go ahead and install that library through the library manager what you have to search is dht hit enter and it will give you a library by Adafruit. There are multiple uh, libraries again. You can use any of them, but for this example, we'll use this DHT sensor library. I have already installed it, so it's uh, disabled in my case. Then you can go ahead and into the examples. It's a good way to uh, actually begin an understanding of the sensor or any library for that matter. Now here, open this DHT tester, which is nothing else but the same program. Though I have removed a lot of comments and made it a little simpler uh, for this tutorial. So let's walk through what's there in this library, uh, in this uh, sketch. Firstly, we are importing the DHT library. Then 
Thereafter, we define the pin number two as a DHT pin and the type of our sensor. There are a variety of sensors. So uh, ours is DHT 11. Then we initialize this class, then our usual suspect, the setup function where we are defining the serial begin and the DHT begin functions. In the loop section, we are firstly defining a delay uh, because I told you that the sensor is pretty so slow. So it takes one second for humidity, one second for uh, temperature. So we need to give it some room, uh, room. Thereafter, we are reading the humidity by using the function called read humidity. Now your question would be, how do I know what the what are the functions in, inside this library? The answer is pretty simple. Just Google for the documentation of this library and you will get all these functions. Thereafter, we are reading the temperature in centigrade and thereafter we are reading temperature in the Fahrenheit. So if you specify true inside this read temperature function, then it will pick up the uh, reading in Fahrenheit. Now again, all the documentation will have the details and uh, examples of this sort. Thereafter, we are checking whether our results were valid or not, means if they were numbers, if they were not, then that means our sensor failed. At the end, we are simply printing all these values in our uh, serial uh, console, serial monitor. So I've already uploaded this program. Let's see what's the humidity and temperature at my place right now. Let me clear the console and wait for it. Yes, so there you go. The humidity is 65%. Uh, that's because it rained over here. And as I told you, it's pretty cold and slightly chilling um, and at my place. So it's 20 degrees centigrade. So there you go. You have a working weather station for your home already in place. Go ahead and try this uh, example and see what's the temperature and humidity. I'm quite sure that a lot of people will comment that uh, bro 20 degree centigrade is not cold and I agree to that. So yeah, that's not chilling or cold. It's that, but that's relative. Okay. So <laughs> yeah, you're right. To make this chapter complete in all sense, I think we should show this temperature and humidity on an OLED screen, right? So let's see how it's done in the next chapter.